It's looking like a great Friday. The beautiful one had a great idea. Since so many of you are wondering, hey, how's the, how's the turkeys doing? How's the guineas doing? How are the potatoes doing? Why don't we go around and give you an update every Friday? First, a quick story. See that field behind me? Yeah, and that pastured poultry pen out there? That used to be a huge CSA field, almost an acre garden that we used to run. And do you see that absolutely beautiful pasture? Yeah, we used to have a grass-fed beef operation that we ran successfully every year. Now, I feel like I should add something to that. Even when we're professional farmers, we were doing it part-time. We've never been full-time farmers. We've, like you, we've always had another job. And then, for some strange reason, we didn't know why, my health began to deteriorate. I began to be depressed. I had mood swings. I was physically unable to do what I used to could do. I was needing naps. I was needing a lot of sleep. And we spent over a year and a half trying to figure out this, what this was and probably over $10,000 of money we didn't really have and finally figured out it was Lyme, chronic Lyme disease. So we were forced to slow down and our farm was hanging on by a thread. If it wasn't for this one volunteer coming out once a week at the time we were running chickens on compost, he came out and turned my piles. The chickens, the farm, might have just completely fallen to the wayside. But after we figured out it was Lyme disease and we began to fight it in a natural way and I began to start feeling a little bit better, my spirit was up, I was beginning to accept the physical limitations, I was done with the grieving, and came back. It's like farming is just who we are. It hung on by a thread because it, it, uh, it is us. It's so much a part of us. But we came back more at the homestead level, challenging ourselves to see how much food we can grow for ourselves. See where the main flock is right now? That's the actual run. We had four piles of compost in here that my friend came and turned. This is the coop that they were in. It's where the guineas were in. It's a static run. It's probably the easiest way to do things. So that's a little bit of our story. Now, let's do the update. That fence wasn't on, by the way. Don't try that when it's on. Okay, the main story here in this main flock are the little guys. Where are they at? Oh, okay. I've been experimenting. I've been putting them in the chick shawl with everybody else and they've been doing just fine. I do need to fix this ramp already. Been redneck long enough here. Get me some uh, sh scrap lumber and give us some ladder steps here. The maggot dispenser has some of the Cornish cross that have died. It's working great. It kind of smells a little bit when you get close to that, but it's not a water cooler. We're not hanging out here and chatting. No matter what I do, it's near impossible to keep this water clean. It's those ducks. They like to wash down their food and they backwash. They're terrible for backwash. If you remember right, we had to undo the Everflow waterer, which was awesome for keeping it clean because of some of the construction that's going on through the culvert that we had to run the pipe through. And I really do think this dirty water, now the dirt usually settles down to the bottom, so it's not quite as bad as it looks but I really do think it has affected egg production a little bit. Then there's the two guineas. They're with everybody else, so I'm confident they're gonna survive. They're doing some flying over the fence and going around like I'd hoped to get the ticks, but not as much as I would like. Somebody commented, they're not really easy to look at. They're not really easy on their eyes. That's true. And somebody else said they kind of look like clowns, and that's also true. And I wish we had three still, so we could call them the Three Stooges. This is a soldier fly bin. This is where we like to Recycle tires. No, the chiddlers put that in here. Of course, we don't have any activity. It takes it takes two or three weeks. It needs some moisture. Right here, the wood pile collapsed. Got this awesome end formation to hold up a huge pile of wood. But as you can see, sometimes it doesn't work. I can hear you saying, what in the heck are you using all that wood for? Well, our primary heat source is wood stove. And we had a neighbor across the street lose these huge trees. So we took advantage of it, split it up once last summer, and now we have, this would probably be enough wood for now for two more winters. It's already lasted us one. Yesterday we transplanted a lot of our pumpkin squash and cucumbers into this thick mulch bed. After we dug these huge holes to get down in the soil, it's worked great. The pumpkins we planted here are, are jamming. The corn we planted here is not jamming. I don't think one seed came up. You win some, you lose some. We're winning on the sunflowers. They're jamming. This was the first garden bed the chickens left. The cabbage is doing great. Now I'm at a very interesting spot. I'm out in the cow field. Look here. We had piled wood chips here in hopes to spread it around and build up this, low, this uh, lower quality 
part of the pasture? Well, we never did it, but now it's been a couple of years and now the cows are in here scratching it, throwing the dust on themselves, getting, it, getting them butt flies off and stuff. And now look at it. It looks to me like the cows are doing my gardening. Since I'm out of here, come and plant directly into this stuff. Wouldn't that be a cool experiment? I think so. How are the cows doing? The cows are doing great. Got some news on Scarlett though. She is sold. Had one of you guys, a viewer, hear about that she was for sale? Came and looked at her last night, gave us the deposit. Wonderful situation she's going to. She's gonna have eight, eight acres of grass. She's got plenty of grass. She's gonna have a huge family that's gonna love on her and do good by her. So, so we're very happy about that. So we're looking at July-ish saying goodbye to her. How you doing, Willow? She looks like she's been eating good. Okay, her udder has got some milk in it, but it's not crazy inflamed. That's usual, that's normal. It takes some time. It takes some time to deflate. Their manure is looking perfect. That's an absolutely perfect squat pie. You don't want it too moist and you don't want it too thick. Looks a lot like chocolate pumpkin pie. Hey. You following me, honey? Where are you going? You, got, you coming with me? You think I got something special for you? And look, if I want to herd the whole herd somewhere, all I got to do is lead Willow and everybody else follows. We don't have to put the cows up right now because they're not in milk. Is the fruit of their labor that a lot of people don't think of. Their manure mixed with wood chips is composting nicely. Ricky was so kind to help us, came out here yesterday, and just turning it is going to really boost its productivity. Our potato plants are doing great. But so is the lamb's quarter. We might have to come back here and cut some of it back. Too bad we don't like lamb's quarter as much as we like potatoes. In the next garden plot over, squashes and pumpkins and cucumbers. See that? This is great. And lettuces. Yay. Lots of lettuce. You'll notice these garden plots behind me, these crop gardens, they are never going to be featured in an organic magazine. They are not these beautiful, prestigious gardens. And nor are they like extremely productive for our use. But listen guys, we'll get some of, the, we'll get some of stuff out of that for very little labor and the chickens will get a lot out of it when we bring them back through. Our manicured and cultivated and carefully taken care of stuff is up in our kitchen garden. Most definitely beat that Miracle Mouse. Look at all these plants coming up in this greenhouse. Mama's hibiscus. We got cucumbers and all kinds of squash coming up. Tomatoes and peppers. Very happy about this. And little Jonah planted his peach tree. I hope that works out. That's really neat. Okay, here's the chicken laying on the duck eggs. She's doing great. She's settled in on them. It's not too long now until they're due to hatch. And this gal is on tea bags eggs. I know that's gonna be exciting for everybody. And she's doing great. The strawberries are doing great. We have enough, a couple handfuls a day. Just something to go with the yogurt. Gotta love the rose bush, it's jamming. Transplanted these cucumbers and squashes yesterday. They're doing good after the transplant. See, you'll notice this is a little more manicured. We have more mulch. We're watering them. You can see where they, where the beautiful one has watered them last night. This is garlic, man. I can't say enough stuff about garlic. We planted that last October, covered up with mulch, walked away. That's it. I've never weeded or anything in there, and it's almost ready to harvest, like this monthish. The chickens had reached their head through when the electric poultry net was over here and harvested some of it, but I think it's all generally doing well. Oh look, a volunteer uh, squash or something, another cucumber coming up through there. Now we're getting excited about this in our kitchen garden. Look how big that's getting. That means we're almost gonna eat some of our first fruits, if you will, from our 100 day challenge. That's some of the quickest growing stuff, lettuce. The lettuce is jamming on the wall too. Actually, this stuff is actually doing a little bit better on the wall, probably because it's planted in straight up compost. Oh my gosh, do we have tomatoes coming up in here? See what I'm talking about? Better at volunteer gardening than anything else. We got volunteer tomatoes coming out of this pallet garden. A vertical pa pa pallet bed. You tell me how that happened. Teabags Posse is doing great in the kitchen garden. See how we've see how the fence used to be over here, and now we just bring in a little bit each week as we plant. Next week we'll bring it over even more. 
and this whole thing will be planted and produce. So we're at 30-ish days on this 100 days of growing food challenge. It's been great. I mean, we're early on. It's, we still got the excitement, we still got the rush of the spring. We have kind of finally got through the rush, the rush rush of spring, planting everything. Now we're just gonna be maintaining things, planting a few stuff, and getting ready for the harvest. They say harvest is half the labor with vegetables and fruits. Check on our potato experiment. Remember this old pile of leaves? Somebody said, oh look, I guess we're growing hammers. We got the potato patch here. These guys are doing good. I mean, for old potatoes that we weren't gonna eat and old leaves that we weren't gonna use, it's working great. It's making me think if the timing's right and those actually do well and they're done, we'll run the chickens through there to clear that area a bit better and put in sweet potatoes. Wouldn't that be awesome? Turkeys are doing great. We actually ended up with 14 from that guy and we've only lost one. I'm very happy about that. They're not really using their, well, yeah, look, they are using their perch. They're not really sleeping on it, but they're beginning to learn balance and whatnot. See them climbing on it? They're still scaring me to death. That one guy at the end was laying down like solid. I can't believe they're still laying down like that. After being, how old are they, beauty? Yeah, they're like four weeks old and they're still napping. Chicks nap for like three days. Yeah, they're doing good, aren't they? You want to hold one? Here you go. Uh, hey, Beauty, I did the update. I think it was a wonderful idea. Oh, good. I think people will like it. Guys, if you like these updates, be sure to like it. Give us a thumb. Hey, Mr. Brown, I'm talking. Hey, if you like this Friday style farm update, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment down below. Tell us if there's anything else you want us to cover. Is there, is there something missing out? Do you have any questions for us? This is a great place to do it. This is be a great place for us to address it on Fridays. So see, Friday guys, the real deal is we clean on Fridays. That's not as fun of a story, is it? No. No. We, I think we told that story once, maybe once and a half. Yeah. And that was like, it. Yeah, you can only tell the cleaning story so many times. Not a lot happens. No. I mean, it's kind of hard to make vacuuming and window cleaning and picking up all our junk interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you got it made, buddy. Right well, good morning, Mr. Josiah. How you doing? Yes, Lily. You calling me? You buried in? Under here? You buried in under here? Are you having a hard time getting up this morning? Are you struggling? What you need? Uh, I'm going to throw me out. Oh, you need me to carry you out? Alright. Let's go. Take your blanket. Oh, your pillow too. Okay. Okay, I'm going to come out here and let out the Cornish Cross this evening. Uh, we decided against the fence because we don't want them to be out too long because of the hawks and the f hawks are not going to be deterred by that fence. So we just decided to totally free range these guys for a couple hours in the evening while we're out doing our evening chores. So we did our first YouTube interview. That means that means another YouTuber called us up on Skype, videotaped it, recorded it, and then published it to the internet. It was scheduled tonight, 7 p.m. Friday, and we're it's there. It's there, right? Oh, it's okay, there. let's check it out. There. Okay, it's on Big Family Homestead. The title of the on their channel is Big Family Homestead with Justin Rhodes. Look, it's already got 88 views. What's the biggest pig that you've seen in the forest here? Now look, he's got ads on here, so listen. Here, here's the thing about the YouTube ads. You gotta, if you wanna help people monetize and make just a tiny bit of money off their videos, watch the, vi watch the ad for uh, 30 seconds. And then you can skip it after 30 seconds and it counts. And they, and they get a little bit of money and helps them sustain the YouTube channel. All right, go ahead, it's been 30 seconds. You wanna crank it up? 
to the Homestead Friends. I gotta tell you what, guys. I hope you're ready for another exciting and soon to be classic edition of this show. We are here with Justin and Rebecca Rhodes from the Justin Rhodes channel, and I've been waiting for so long to get you guys on. How the heck are you? We're doing really good. Good. Better than good? No. I'm a little <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I got to tell you what, guys. I have been. All right, that's gonna be a fun one. I don't know. Are we gonna watch it? We kind of, we kind of know. We, 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 we like lived it. But I think, it, I think it was a fun interview. Brad and his wife were a lot of fun. We'll leave the link below. <laughs>